We are very happy to give a presentation here about our very recent common work. Rita is a psychologist uh, and she will uh, introduce us uh, in the quite complicated question of resilience. Uh, how can we understand it properly? And then in the second part of our presentation I will use or misuse uh, uh, her ideas uh, for the questions of, uh, uh, of, of the church, uh, resilience, possibilities of church, and uh, as well <clears throat> to connect the questions uh, to our core problems, uh, uh, use and misuse of religion. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to show uh, you uh, the definition uh, about resilience because as well as we uh, know that uh, it's not so clearly uh, and uh, not so clearly the hypothesis about uh, resilience. Uh, now I would like to show uh, those uh, definitions that use uh, in uh, psychology. So resilience uh, to describe resilience, uh, the following definition can be uh, given by, uh, by the American Psychological Association. Um, resilience is the process and outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences, especially through mental, emotional and behavioral flexibility and adjustment to external and internal domains. A number of factors contribute to how well people adapt uh, to adversities, predominant among them the ways in which individuals weep and, um, and engage with the world uh, to availability and quality of social resources, specific coping um, strategies. Psychological research demonstrates that uh, the resources and skills associated with more positive adaption for example, the greater resilience can be cultivated and practiced. I don't know if you know uh, this Moroccan toy, this uh, scope. In, in this scope, there are a lot of pieces, uh, colorful pieces. And when you take away, there is a, a differently mosaic uh, pictures. And uh, now what I would like to show you, if we take away a little bit this scope, we can uh, see uh, resilience in religious uh, studies. Maybe this will be uh, this color for pictures. And uh, in this picture, we can uh, take resilience term uh, in other uh, terms. It will be um, empowerment, for example. But first of all, uh, when we uh, see and understand uh, the level of individual resilience, we can uh, take it uh, to collective level two. The individual aspects of resilience can also be understand, understood uh, at the community level. The question is what the community needs to be seen as resilient and what can be a resource. And um, our uh, answer is for the resources, the two uh, determinants of uh, resources are uh, social identity and empowerment. Social identity of which religion and the church are integral apart and em empowerment. Empowerment we can uh, understand uh, is the degree of autonomy and um, self-determination in people and in communities too. This enables them to uh, represent their interest in responsible and uh, self-determined way, acting on their own uh, authority. We can uh, see the improvement uh, in community level two. Outcomes might include evidence or, of uh, pluralism and um, extents of organizational coalitions and accessible community resources. These resources are social environment, 
spiritual springs, church communities, religious traditions or uh, visions. All of these contribute to development of a social identity which is key to resilience. A weak social identity uh, leads to weak resilience. Okay. So a very short introduction to the question of resilience uh, and uh, <clears throat> to focus a little bit or to, to, to remember resilience is a, is a capacity, is a capacity to go forth. And the question is uh, what capacities churches and uh, religious visions have to give uh, a support for resilience. So for a capacity to solve problems, to go forth without losing of their own original identity. So that, that is the core question. And now um, I would like to, to give uh, uh, some criteria or aspects. And you will see resilience uh, is uh, something as an empowerment. And empowerment is supported or has the, or contains different uh, uh, virtues and capacities. Now, uh, if we take a look to, uh, to the church, not first of all to the entire church, to the highest level, pope or patriarch or so, but uh, church communities uh, we are living in or we are observing them, then uh, we can ask how this resilience capacity is supported through different church activities and, uh, and statements and behaviors and how churches are able as well to stop or to weaken these uh, capacities. So the, the question is, uh, I think for us, if we combine use and misuse of religion and resilience, the question is what kind of behavior of churches support resilience? And misuse means behaviors of the church which don't support resilience or the capacity of resilience on their don't give support for a kind of empowerment, but they weaken resilience of the people and of uh, institutions as well of uh, church institutions and uh, church uh, communities on the parochial level or, 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 or basic uh, uh, communities or uh, faith-based uh, organizations uh, and so on. So, therefore, on the right side, you can see uh, the use, so the, the positive way, you ask us uh, to be positive, we are very positive, we are coming from Hungary, but could be, could be uh, other than very positive, yeah, if we are in Czech Republic, yeah. So, and then, and then, and the other side, on the left side, the left side, this is the hell side, <laughs> we know from the Bible, the hell side, misuse, is the misuse. Misuse means weakening, and uh, using means uh, strengthening religion. So the first is uh, communities, church communities, if they are authentic, if they have an authentic behavior, then the authentic authenticity they support resilience, the inauthentic behavior and decisions of um, religious communities, uh, in, uh, independent from which uh, high the level is, is it, is, it, it weakens resilience. That means authenticity. Authentic behavior is if there is a synchron, if there is a synchron between the revealed truth, God, God's will, we can uh, take it, very simple, 
So if, the, if there is coherent, the behavior is coherent with the, with, the, with the message of the New Testament, then it is authentic. If it is not coherent, then it is not authentic. And it has then a, a, a weakening um, effort uh, for, for, for people and for groups. And then the, the second, uh, the second uh, example is um, the question how we understand as Christian people and as church, how we understand the truth. That means truth. And how we understand the truth, it depends uh, whether we will support resilience or, or not. We support resilience if truth is, if about truth we have a pluralistic meaning. It means if the church uh, don't means that we have the truth. No church are re normally in the systematic understanding of ecclesiology and, and dogmatic, that church is as well as seeker institutions. Although we are called by, 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 by God to be in a permanent dialogue, which is the uh, uh, church main, main mission, but the church has not the truth. And it means then the church needs dialogue with other religious uh, organizations as well, and as well with non-religious people as well to understand more and more step by step or decade by decade or century by century to understand more deep and more clear what is the truth, what God, what God wants to have for, from us. So if we have a pluralistic understanding of truth as well of religious truth about the re revelation, then we are obligated from the inside, the motivated, to be in permanent dialogue with all people with goodwill. And it, this capacity to be in dialogue, in, in, in permanent dialogue with other people, this capacity strengthen resilience. Um, on the other hand, if we have uh, an exclusive uh, understanding of the truth, only the Catholic ch Church has the truth, no other one, the, the consequence is all other people are enemies because they have not the truth and Therefore, they are not able to have a proper uh, behavior. So we should have a fear. And our trust and our uh, 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 close connect with God is threatened by other, by the other. And this understanding of truth weakens the capacity of empowerment because people have always fear and they um, will be then not able to, to, to be still active in the process of seeking the truth and of seeking the, uh, the better or, or, or the best uh, practice uh, uh, in, 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 in different conflicts like these uh, horrible conflicts uh, in, the, in, the, in the Ukraine with, with aggressor and self-defense, uh, uh, Slava Ukraina. Yeah. So, and... Um, the last example, example I, I, I will show you to, to, to have more time for discussion and reflections uh, is um, the, the differentiation between um, uh, victim, between victim and victim, victimization and martyria. Um, because it is, it is I think, uh, uh, crucial. Um, all, com all, all, countries, all countries in Central and Eastern Europe uh, are expert, how can we be victim? So the, the, the victim game is, is, is the best game uh, in our countries, uh, according to my, uh, my analysis. And uh, so uh, victims uh, avoid questions. Victims uh, uh, live in a, in, in a bubble and, and think uh, we can not ask, we can or only admire. We can not be in, in a dialogue. We, we should not have self-critic because we are victim. So 
we are like Jesus Christ. Yes? You, you are not, for you, it is not allowed to ask Jesus Christ whether you have right with your thinking and behavior and, and message. No, it is not possible because he is the victim of the entire history of humankind. And this position, this basic or fundamental understanding, self-understanding of people in our country, as included as well, uh, faithful uh, uh, people and, and, and church communities is very fundamental and, and very common. But these, but these understanding, self-understanding and understanding of our faith is, uh, uh, is permanently blocking the resilience capacity because you are not able to move. You cannot able to change your meaning because you are captured by your victim consciousness. But the Christian, I would like to say, the very Christian or the, the very Christian understanding of victim, it is martyria. It is martyr. And martyr, for the martyrs, is not their victimhood in the core or in the center of their self-understanding, but the following of the small path of Jesus Christ. So martyrs are not self-centered people. Martyrs are other-centered. Martyrs has the capacity, or martyrhood, is the highest level of the mission, of the teaching, of the, of, of the giving of a holy statement about the truth of God and about the salvation we have uh, through the uh, through the through through the through the to the, the die and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, of or of our Lord, so that is a basic different being martyr, and if you understand your faith as a martyr, in or in concept or in the frame of martyrhood, then you are free to understand martyrhood material of others, so you are open, and you are as well able to uh, uh, go forth for your, from your negative faith for your uh, positive uh, uh, chance. That they are, they are the martyrs. Um, so, um, you can see there are many other points here, and I have another slide as well. There are as well uh, uh, a lot of other points, but I would like, or we would like, if uh, Rita allow me, uh, we would like to stop here, um, because we need uh, your reflections and your comments and critics uh, to elaborate uh, more precise our uh, idea. Thank you very much for your attention. Very nice and very positive. Thank you very much, uh, Pavel Hosh. Thank you both very much for a very perceptive analysis. Um, I think the observation about, uh, about feeling as a victim is, is very profound. I see an obvious tendency among us coming from the small countries in the Central and Eastern Europe to sort of understand, understand ourselves as victims and taking that as an excuse. What I'm really puzzled with is actually the way in which in, in this Russian discourse, the idea of Russia being a potential victim Russia being a large country, unlike Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, being an empire. But still, there is this sense, and it, it psychologically it puzzles me, almost as if Russians would feel like the West wants to destroy them, and, and this almost as if that would be a sort of feeling one's value or, 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 or basing one's value on this projected desire of the West 
to destroy Russia. I don't think anybody wants to destroy Russia. I, I, I think so. most of us would be very happy if, if they just let us leave, live and but but there seems to be this very strong interest in feeling as a victim and in destroying others to prevent them to destroy us which is such a strong factor at least on the level of rhetorics but maybe even in people's hearts so i wonder what what, what do you think about this this uh, psychology of feeling a potential victim Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a conversation between us too, because um, so you can see uh, that if uh, in micro community, if I am a victim, that could be a resilience uh, behavior. But in context, in bigger context, it isn't because you haven't got flexibility. So uh, in a short time, maybe it's, it's working, but that's sure uh, in a big picture, it's a, it is a weakness. Oh, so many questions. So I don't know who was first, but uh, let's go for according to the scenario. Um. Thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to uh, say that it's, it's, I guess it's a big help making the connection between resilience on a psychological level to a societal level. I mean, um, it's very difficult to get a grasp on the concept of resilience, which originally, of course, stems from uh, psychology. So it, it, it helps a lot. So... Uh, so far, my very positive comments. Uh, however, liking the role of devil's advocate, um, resilience can be productive, but also delusional, both on, on an individual and collective level. So, if I would, if I would be um, Petra Kirill, I would say my approach of um, uh, promoting Russian uh, Russian identity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, projecting the West as waging war against us, etc., all these things, is a kind, of, from from my perspective, as Peter Kirill, a kind of resilience because it helps to rebuild the church and also in the West, as you know, uh, the some circles in the church participating in cultural wars. Is interpreted in a kind of is, in, is interpreted as a kind of resilience. So my question is: Do you need to uh, more categories than the ones you used in the red and the um, um, blue uh, to define resilience? Because if you take this, these two schemes back uh, in, in your so on the on the red side, well, so. I mean, I agree with you, but nevertheless, um, I think that this, all these red categories are far more effective in building resilience than the blue ones. So <laughs> that's the devil's advocate. So could you comment on that? But we are short of time, so quick. Thank you very much, Peter. As a good philosopher, uh, starts with the uh, understanding of a uh, notion. <laughs> so, well, um, we wanted to clarify, it was the part of Rita, what means resilience. And then uh, from this definition, we uh, elaborated the criteria how we can check whether one thinking or one behavior support more resilience or destroy or weakens resilience capacity. So according to our understanding, resilience uh, is uh, not a value neutral notion. 
Resilience means capacity for dialogue, for change, for self-critique, for doubt, uh, for collaboration, for uh, uh, reframing of our own mindset, uh, without the fear losing everything, losing uh, or of our ad identity. So, un so understand we resilience. Of course, it is very hard to speak about resilience because, uh, as we were talking about by the breakfast, breakfast uh, uh, we live actually in a in, in, in a time of uh, millions of uh, resilience experts, like uh, two years ago, millions of COVID experts, and yeah, and today as well, millions of war uh, of war um, experts, and so on and so on. So, I think you are right. You are right. We can reinterpret all our all of our points if we change the basic meaning. What means resilience? But if we if we still are consequent with our understanding, then I think this uh, this differentiation works. Uh, and uh, very concrete. Sorry, I am long, but I was short uh, with my presentation. So uh, to the war. We can see how Russia, politically and as well religiously, is more and more isolated. And if we can observe that, then it is a consequence of a type of politics. And this type of politics is, as, as our former presenter exactly showed us, showed us, is the weakening of resilience. Russia is actually not able to, ch to change nothing. They can be as the small child, three years old child, as my, my uh, grand uh, kid. They can only repeat, we have right, we have right. And not, not other, they are not able, not able to change. And therefore they weakened through their politics, their own capacity of uh, resilience. I think. I'm afraid to uh, enable two other questions, but if you can be super short, I, I will give you the chance. You were asking for feedback, so my suggestion would be to tackle and to develop the idea of Timothy Snyder about so-called big lie. I think the idea that uh, of justice war is a big lie which produced Russian propaganda and the resilience we lose is just facing this, this big lie. We, have to, we don't need to discuss with the liars. We need to show that they lie. So that would be the way, yeah, the truth uh, is uh, uh, something which is defined but, uh, but uh, by that souznění, uh, 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 I don't know, that, that harmony of, of yeah, the, uh, or the, uh, of, of the agreement of the reality and its description. And so this is what I am thinking of, yes, big lie and the truth itself. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, the best propaganda is the true, right? Uh, you, yeah, yeah, please, sure. Yes, I can uh, make it very short. I, I uh, thank you. Maybe you can give the slide back with the left and the right. Yes, this one. So, so uh, I think this is really clarifying and uh, interesting. Although I, I would say that I lack a kind of... Um, so it's clear that the blue, the, the right one, is the, the good one, obviously. Yeah? This is what you want society to be. At the same time, um, maybe uh, resilience suggests that this is the best way to survive as a community or to survive as a nation or whatever. But the point is, if this is the good, category, if a society should be like this, should be authentic and inclusive and pluralist, then maybe survival shouldn't be the best criterion. Maybe it's better for a society not to survive in a war, but be authentic and inclusive and pluralist, than be not resilient and inauthentic and aggressive, etc. So, do you understand my question as to, to what is good and bad here? I should be very short. Uh, thank you for the remarks we will think about.